I've got a really cool problem for you guys today. So what we're gonna do is solve for x in the following equation. So we have x times the floor of x times the floor of x times the floor of x equals 2020. So that's the current year. If you're watching this in the future, um, comment on what the future's like. Um, okay, so first of all, I want to recall that this um, floor of x is also called the greatest integer function, and uh, it's the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So let's just look at a couple of quick examples so we're all on the same page. So the floor of 3 is equal to 3 because the largest integer that is smaller than or equal to 3 is obviously 3 itself. We're already at an integer. The floor of 5 over 2 or 5 halves, that's going to be 2 because 5 over 2 is 2 and a half and the greatest integer smaller than 2 and a half is clearly 2. And then the floor of negative a half is negative 1 kind of for the same reason. So I like to think of this floor function as like an elevator down. So if you're between two integers, it's going to take you down a floor to the next integer. Okay, now before we get started, um, I want to point out that at the end of the video, I'm going to to describe some possible extensions or new problems built on this. So I urge you to wait until the end of the video. And in addition, I think this is a great opportunity to make a series of videos if any of you guys want to pick one and do it. I'll add a card afterwards to your video solution. Okay, great. So let's get started. I'm not going to jump into this equation uh, just all at once, I'm going to look at a simpler example. And so this is an excellent um, problem solving technique, which is try to um, figure out a solution to a simpler example and then adapt that to your problem. Okay, so the one that I'm going to look at is x times the floor of x equals 10. Okay, great. So now notice that x times the x times the floor of x is going to behave approximately like x squared. So uh, maybe let's point that out real quick. So x times the floor of x is going to approximately behave like x squared. And in fact, at integers, it's going to be exactly equal to x squared. So actually, that's a, that's a nice thing you could do is look in Wolfram Alpha or whatever graphing um, function that you like to use and look at the graph of this type of function versus the graph of x squared. I think you'll find it pretty interesting. Um, and another thing to notice is that solving x squared equals 10 is obviously going to give us two solutions. We're going to get x equals uh, plus or minus the square root of 10, but we know that uh, the square root of 10 is somewhere between 3 and 4, and we know that because obviously 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16. So uh, what that tells us is that we immediately know that x is going to be between 3 and 4. We know it can't be 3 because if we plug 3 into this, we'll get 9. It can't be 4 because if we plug 4 into this, we'll get 16. Um, so it's got to be between those. And and furthermore, we know that this is an increasing function for positive values of x and a decreasing function for negative values of x. I'll let you guys check that. So that means for positive values of x, um, this is the only region where a solution could exist. Okay, so that's the first thing to notice. The next thing to notice is that the floor of x is going to be equal to an integer at all times. So I'll let that integer be equal to m, which is not strictly necessary to give it another name um, for this simpler example, but it will be extremely helpful when we move on to our main goal. So the floor of x equals m. So notice that turns this equation up here into the following x times m equals 10 for some um, <clears throat> m, which is an integer. Great. In other words, we have x equals 10 over m for some integer m. Okay, great. But now what we want to do is put this together with this inequality and notice that we've just found a condition. We want to find 
m, which are integers, such that x is between 3 and 4, but we're viewing x as 10 over m. So we have 3 is less than 10 over m is less than 4. So in this case, we can kind of guess what m is, but let's go through all of the details uh, for just our main goal. And notice uh, we can reciprocate both sides. That's going to change the order of the inequality. So we'll get a quarter um, m over 10 and 3. But what that tells us is that m is between uh, 10 over 3 and uh, 10 over 4. But notice 10 over 4 is like 2 and a half, and 10 over 3 is like a little bit more than 3. So that means there is only one integer between those two uh, fractions, and that is m equals 3. So in other words, we have a possible solution at x equals 10 over 3. Now we need to check that that is a solution. So we can check that's a solution by doing 10 over 3 times the floor of 10 over 3. But notice the floor of 10 over 3 is 3, so we get 10 over 3 times 3, which is 10. Great. So in fact, 10 over 3 is a solution. Okay, so I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to quickly look to see if we can find a negative solution before moving on to our main goal. So on the last board we argued that if x was bigger than 0, x equals 10 over 3 as a solution. Now we're going to look at the case when x is less than 0. So I've skipped that first step. We can very easily get to the fact that x needs to be between negative 4 and negative 3. Notice if you plug uh, negative 4 into this, we'll get positive 16, which is too big. Negative 3 into this, you get positive 9, which is too small. So that means x has to be in between those. But also, we still know that the floor of x x is equal to m, which is an integer. Um, in this case, that integer uh, is going to be negative. And that gives us this equation um, that we need where x times m equals 10. In other words, x equals 10 over m, where m is some negative integer. Okay, so just like we did uh, before, we're going to plug this equation into this inequality, and our goal is to find all negative integers uh, such that uh, 10 over m is between negative 3 and negative 4. So I'll skip a little bit of the details because it's exactly the same that we saw before. What we'll see in this case is that m equals negative 3 is the only possibility, which tells us we have a possible solution at x equals uh, 10 over m or 10 over negative 3 or negative 10 over 3. But now what we want to do is check that that's actually a solution by uh, plugging it into our equation and see, what's ha see what happens. So we have negative 10 over 3 times the floor of negative 10 over 3. But notice the floor of negative 10 over 3 is going to be negative 4 because negative 10 over 3 is smaller than negative 3. So that's going to give us negative 10 over 3 times negative 4, um, which is clearly not equal to positive 10. Notice that's equal to 40 over 3, which is clearly not equal to positive 10. So what that tells us is that um, we have no solution if x is less than zero. Okay, great. I'll clean up the board and now we're armed with the tools to solve our goal equation. Okay, so now that we're warmed up, we're ready to look at our goal equation, which is x times the floor of x times the floor of x times the floor of x equals 2020. So the first thing that we want to do is notice that the fourth root of 2020 is approximately equal to um, 6.7. Great. And so by our argument before, we know any type of solution, um, which is positive, so we'll look for positive solutions first, then that means x has to be strictly between 6 and 7. 
And you can check that if you plug six into this left-hand side, you'll get something smaller than 2020. If you plug seven into this left-hand side, you'll get something larger than 2020. But that's kind of obvious because this fourth root is 6.7. That means 6.7 to the fourth power is approximately 220. But that means six to the fourth power is going to be smaller and seven to the fourth power is going to be larger. Okay, great. Now, the next thing we want to do is notice that we have the following. We have... Uh, the floor of x times the floor of x times the floor of x, that is equal to m, which is an integer. It's actually a positive integer in this case because we're dealing with positive solutions. And this is the big trick for solving this equation is even though it looks a lot more complicated, you still only have to do the same strategy. Iterating this floor function really only has the effect of checking more possible solutions at the end as we will see. Okay. Okay, so what this means is now we have x times m equals 2020. Great, because notice that is uh, this bit over here, which tells us that x equals 2020 over m, where m is some positive integer. Okay, but now what we want to do is put this into this inequality. Great. In other words, we have the following goal. We want to find positive integers m such that um, 6 is less than 220 over m, which is less than 7. So something like that. But now notice we can do the whole flip -a -roo on that inequality, and that's going to give us um, 1 7th is less than m over 2 20, which is less than 1 6th. But that's going to give us um, 220 over 7 is less than m, which is less than 220 over 6. Okay. But the next thing that we can do is, since m has to be strictly greater than this uh, fraction right here, that means it is greater than or equal to its ceiling. And likewise, if m is strictly less than 220 over 6, it's less than or equal to its floor. So that gives us this following inequality. So the ceiling of 220 over 6, which is equal to 280. Nine. Great. So I'll let you guys check that. That's just arithmetic. So that's going to be less than or equal to m, which is less than or equal to 336. Great. Which is uh, equal to the floor of 220 over 6. So great. We've turned our... Um, strict inequality into um, a less than or equal to type situation. So in other words, we have lots of possible solutions and they all lie in this form, 220 over m, where m ranges between those. So uh, let's summarize that here. So possible solutions um, are x from this set, so 220 over 336 all the way up to 220 over uh, 289. And uh, the next thing that you can do is check that none of these work. which means there's no solution among uh, the positive values. Um, and you might say, well, that feels a little cheap. How do we know that none of those work? Well, I made a table in Mathematica, but we're gonna present another proof that none of these work um, just now. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. So on the last board, we had an exhaustive argument that there was no such solution. In other words, we got a list of all possible solutions, and then we checked that list. I checked it in a computer, and I saw that uh, there are no solutions, but I want to provide maybe something that's a little more satisfying. And so here we'll claim that there are no such solutions, and what I mean by that, there are no positive numbers, x, so that you can solve this equation over here. Okay, so let's see how this goes. So let's go ahead and take x between uh, 6 and 7. In other words, it's in the open interval 6 and 7. And now we want to work from the inside to the outside of this left-hand side. So here's what we'll notice first. 
and that is the floor of x in this case is going to be 6. So we know that because x is most definitely bigger than 6 and it's less than 7 so it takes that elevator down. Okay, great. But what that tells us is that x times the floor of x is going to be equal to 6x. But then we know that x is strictly less than 7, so we know that this is strictly less than 42, which is equal to 6 times 7. Okay, great. But now we can take a floor of this, so that makes the floor of x times the floor of x um, strictly less than or equal to 41. Okay, great. And now we're all set. Now we can go ahead and look at x, floor x, floor x, floor x, like that. And notice that this thing is going to be uh, less than or equal to, so I'm going to replace these two x's with 7's because we know that we get something uh, bigger than or equal to if we replace them with 7's. And I should say this is strictly bigger than. We know we get something strictly bigger if we replace those with 7's. So we'll have 7 floor 7 times and then we just argued uh, that this guy right here was less than or equal to 41. So I'll put a 41 in there. And now notice if you multiply those guys up, you get uh, 2009, which is less than 2020. Okay, so what that does is that shows us that uh, if we have an X number between uh, 6 and 7, the biggest it po could possibly be is 2009. But this isn't a super tight inequality. All we really needed to show was that it was impossible to get to 2020, and uh, we've done that. So I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at uh, negative values. So we just got done showing two ways that there is no positive solution to our goal equation. Let's look for a negative solution. So via similar arguments to before, we know that if we have a negative solution, it's going to lie between negative 7 and negative 6. And we also know that the floor of x times the floor of x times the floor of x is going to be equal to m, which is a negative number in this case. Notice we've got three x's there. Um, um, all of those are negative, so this is going to make a negative number. And then following our same strategy, we know that x times m is going to be 2020. In other words, x equals 2020 over m, where m is uh, one of these negative integers. Okay, so just like we did before, we're going to take this condition, this form of m... <laughs> this form of x condition and this inequality condition and mash them together. So what that gives us is that negative 7 is less than 2020 over m, which is less than negative 6. We can take the reciprocal and do the flip -a -roo on that. So that means we have negative 6 is less than m over 2020, which is less than negative 7th. Okay? And now, what that tells us is that m is going to be between negative 2020 over 6 and negative 2020 over 7. Now we can do the same idea with the floor and the ceiling. In other words, if we add a ceiling to the left of this, this will become a strict inequality. And if we add a floor to the right of this, this is going to become a strict inequality. So this means that M is between negative 337 and negative 288. That's what you get if you take the ceiling and the floor of this left and right hand side. Okay, now putting this, these possible values for m, into the fact that x has this format of solution, we know that x has to come from the following set. It'll be negative 220 over 288. So that's the smallest this thing can be. Negative 220 over 287, all the way up to negative 220 over uh, 337. Great. And how did I get that? Well, that's just uh, dividing 220 by all the possible values of m that we get. 
And now what we can do is uh, do an exhaustive search. So again, it feels a little cheap, but I did this in a computer in order to check. And what you'll get is that X equals negative 220 over 305 works. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then I'll present the little calculation um, that this actually does work. So we've argued that the only solution is x equals negative 220 over 305. And here I did this calculation from inside to outside. So I've color coded it. So you can go ahead and pause if you wanna look at this calculation. I'm not gonna leave it on the board or talk about it super carefully. Now, how do we know that there's not another solution? Okay, so since our solution is negative, if x is bigger than negative 220 over 305, um, that's gonna make this product less than 2 220 and vice versa if x is smaller than negative 220 over 305. Okay, I'm going to clean this up and then present some follow-up questions. So now that we've seen a full solution to our goal equation, um, I want to point out some kind of obvious questions that we could uh, follow up on. And I urge you guys to make some videos about these and I'll link them in a card once you do. Okay, so what if we wrap our equation in another floor? So in other words, we take this thing and just put a floor around the whole thing. So this will definitely still be solvable. It will have uh, a solution which is exactly the solution that we had before, but I think there are more solutions in this case, more than one. Now, um, I used this fact that x was either between negative 7 and negative 6 or between 6 and 7 and then performed this guess and check operation. I'm wondering, can we tighten this bound um, so that there's less guess and check? In other words, can we make these intervals smaller before we even get started. Then, uh, for what natural numbers is this kind of infold iteration of this floor operation equal to 220 solvable? And is there a pattern to the solutions? Obviously, uh, the most important thing is that denominator uh, of the 220. So uh, perhaps the pattern is happening in that denominator of the 220. And then lastly, what if we alternate the floor and the ceiling? So here we have x times the floor of x times the ceiling of x times the floor of x um, equals 220 or x times the ceiling of x times the floor of x times the ceiling of x equals 220. So I think this alternating floor and ceiling is pretty interesting. I think moving to a straight ceiling question is not super interesting because that just is equivalent to solving it with an opposite sign. Okay, so I think this is a good place to stop.